Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe, and this is Games with Gabe. This is the first episode in a new series, Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java. So I'm really excited about this series because we will be learning a lot of things about how games work in general and how to code one, a whole engine yourself. So this will hopefully be a great series. Uh, what we will be building was featured in the intro of this video. So what you saw is the final game that we will be building with this engine. Uh, it's not the only game you can build with this engine. It's just a game that I decided to make because it is a significant icon that has been really famous. And I figured what better game to highlight what we can do with this engine than Mario. So I hope you guys stay tuned. This episode, there will be no coding. This will be purely explaining what features we will implement in this engine and what techniques and skills you will learn from this series. So I feel like that's a little bit cheaty. So I'm also going to release the actual first tutorial, which will highlight starting the window and setting up the project and all that good stuff. Okay guys, I hope you enjoy this though and stay tuned to see what you will be learning in this series. All right, guys, so what we'll we be learning in this whole series? We're actually going to be learning quite a bit. Uh, the first thing that we will be learning about is LWJGL. So that's the lightweight Java game library. I say we'll be learning about it, but really we're just going to be using it as the framework for our game engine. And so what this is, is you may think it sounds like, oh, we're going to be using a game engine since this is a game library, but that's not true. What this is, is it's basically a wrapper around some graphics libraries and stuff that we may need, that we will need when we are coding our game engine. And so this basically gives us the bindings to the C code This uh, we can use it in Java. So it's really helpful because it gives us the speed and the flexibility of all the uh, graphics libraries that are in written in C, but we can use it in Java. Now, what libraries are we going to be using? We're going to be using OpenGL and GLFW for the window handling and for the graphics. So OpenGL stands for Open Graphics Library, and it's basically an open source graphics library. And a graphics library just means it gives us access to uploading uh, data to the GPU and allows us to draw things using the GPU and all that stuff. And it gives us functions that allow us to like communicate with it and uh, send data back and forth and all that good stuff. Then what GLFW stands for is Graphics Library Framework. And so all that is, is it's our window handler. It basically uh, gives us a way to create a window and handle that window, listen for key events and everything, regardless of the operating system. So we don't have to worry about specifics of window handling, which is really nice when you're starting off and learning how to do this stuff. So one of the things that we'll be learning how to do that's different from sort of what we were doing before is rendering. Now, when we use these graphics libraries, we can't simply just say draw a square. We actually have to create something called a mesh, send it to the GPU, and then use a shader to describe how to draw this mesh. And then we're gonna implement this final feature called bashing, which will, which will speed up our rendering uh, quite a bit. So typically with batching, this basically speeds up your rendering times because instead of drawing every single square, you can draw them all in one big batch, which is exactly as it sounds like. Now, these are just some pictures of some uh, spheres being rendered with PBR, which is something that we could eventually get to. And I definitely do want to get to that once we start the 3D version of this engine. Now, next thing we're going to be learning about is animation systems. And so the system that I decided to teach you guys is the finite state automata. Now, basically what a finite state automata is exactly as it this picture shows it's basically just a few different states with transitions between each of the states and we will use this to create our animation systems and we'll have animation states and then animation transitions that we'll be able to trigger and this will be really nice when we go to create all the different animations we need to attach to our game objects and we're only going to be doing sprite based animation but we will be implementing keyframes so that you can uh, time out your animation in different uh, lengths and stuff between each of the time steps which is nice Another thing we're gonna be learning about, physics. Every good game needs physics. And so we're gonna be doing our physics, sort of a tile-based physics for the static objects. And then for dynamic objects, we'll implement a little bit of a different system. We're not gonna be doing anything too smart with the physics just yet, but it will be basic box collision detection and collision resolution so that we can have our characters moving around the screen, detect which side they're hitting and everything, and then pass that on to every single component so that if they need to respond to a collision, they have the ability to do so. 
last one of the last things that we're going to be learning about is user interfaces so this is a picture from the actual game engine the final features that we'll be making and you can see we have these windows and these buttons we are coding all this by hand we will be coding how to draw every single little bit of this window to the interactability of when the mouse clicks on buttons what to do when to do it all that good stuff which is really important to know how to do in case you are ever in a situation when you need to code it yourself or when you need to understand why something is misbehaving. So this will give you a little bit of a deeper understanding of how user interfaces work in general. And then one of the final things I feel like gets skipped over too much and really shouldn't be because this is one of the most important steps in building a game is packaging and distribution. So I will be showing you how to package your Java game into a jar file so that you can distribute it through different websites and allow your friends to play it on whatever machine they are operating on. And you'll know there's actually a link in the description that you can click on to download the final engine and the little game that I made with it, which is sort of what we'll be doing too when I show you how to package it and distribute it because these are really important. If you wanna share your work with the world, you need to do this. And then finally, what we're gonna be doing is putting it all together using the game Mario. So this game you may think is actually really simple and in a way it is if you're using something like Unity which has all the features built in already but it has a lot of complex features that are actually test all your skills physics it has physics it has sprite based animation it has uh, complex game logic that you need to communicate with each other you need game objects to be able to find each other and communicate with each other smartly it also has a pretty complex level editor if you want to build the levels pretty easily, you need to put a little bit of work into how you decide to design it so that the user can actually drag and drop different things and all that good stuff, connect pipes, doing all of that. And it's actually pretty hard to get optimized correctly. So when I first started coding, I thought this would be a good game to start coding. It's simple enough. And I actually couldn't even start my browser. So I coded it in JavaScript and it just crashed my whole browser because of how slow it was. So it does require a little bit of forethought. You can't just slap something on there, slap some sprites together and throw in all the objects and hope that it all works. You have to put some thought and you have to put some consideration into how you design it. So this will be a final test of our engine. And it's what we will use to basically just make sure that our engine is working well. So that's what we'll be learning about throughout the series. I hope you guys will enjoy it. And the first tutorial will be released in just a little bit. So stay tuned for that, guys. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.